We talked off the top about the word comeback is being thrown around with this new record, and it, it, and it is the first record in a while, and it, it brings up questions about why it all ended in the first place. It, was it as painless and as friendly between you all as it seemed from the outside when you decided to call it quits? I mean, it's just that we realized that it had run its course. You know, um, we went in to do another album and, um, just at the end of that summer of 2003, and we did about a week or something like that, or 10 days, and it just... You know, there was no vibe. It was just kind of everyone sitting around, not saying a whole lot and going through the motions. And then we took a break. and We were meant to go back and finish the album later in the year. But it was, you know, it didn't take long for us to all get home and realise we actually just wanted to do that for a while. Yeah, it all sounds very adult. But D Dolores, you've also <coughs> said that you really needed the break from the band and, the, and that you went a bit mental and you were suffering panic attacks. What was going yeah, on? Yeah, but you were too, weren't you? know, jump in yeah, here. Yeah, like that was We earlier. both went a bit nutty, yeah. didn't we? But Around okay. 2006, so, uh, that was where... Yeah, that was 2006, and, yeah. and that was just because we basically left Ireland in 1990, and we basically did, we brought out everybody else. But, so, I mean, we wrote it, we recorded it, we went on tour, we got massively famous, we were a bunch of kids, out of school, into the frying pan, yeah. into the fire, whatever, yeah. out the frying pan, into the fire. But then, uh, you know, it, we got hugely famous, and then we uh, we went out, and when we were touring the first album, we kept writing, we wrote, yeah. uh, No Need to Argue. And then um, we recorded that and went back out on the road with that as Straight well. Away. So yeah. then we were going into like three, four years into 93, 94. And then um, after that, we went back into the studio and recorded Hello, I'm Cracking Up to the Faithful Departed album. That was kind of the sad one. And all the songs were about, yeah, salvation, you know, F off. And I don't like right. being, you know, free to the side, leave me alone. Because yeah. it was suddenly you're chased by paparazzis and all that. And your your whole world goes mental. That and was your you. reaction. Well, I mean, the whole world goes mad, really, and life as you knew it is gone. And, uh, you know, I just I just could not keep up with the pace and I got really burnt out. And uh, I signed all these contracts to do this tour then in 96, which was just going and going, the Energizer Bunny. And so basically I had to go see a bunch of doctors who sent me to a shrink. And the shrink told me, I see lots of famous people and you're not really mad. The world around you is mad. Right. You have no sanity. Right. So basically he said, get the hell out of the planet. Go hide somewhere if you can. So I went to Ontario then. Um, up north. You came here, here to yep, Canada, here, to yeah. Ontario, yeah. Up in the forest, and uh, the only thing you have to worry about up there is bears and bear poo, not walking in it. But how, <laughs> and, and just not did, camera. How, how was, how would it express itself? Like, would you, were you on stage or, or like at night you couldn't sleep? When, when, when would you get the panic attacks? Um, it used to happen to us in press, didn't it? No. Yeah, like everywhere. You were getting them too. Yeah. It's amazing, eh? Like, you, you kind of lived the dream that all, all musicians yeah. think is the dream. 40 million records sold. Mm -hmm. And then you guys are sitting there having panic attacks. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it's really weird because I remember, I remember just, you know, looking at my cup of water and wanting to drink it, but my hand wouldn't move because my brain was telling my hand. You know, it's just some, it's a physiological thing because I read actually a book about it and... I mean, people are, you know, finding out more about it. Like, it's it's not as uncommon as it seems, but no, it just happens to people who are just overly stressed and when you're losing sleep and then you're not sleeping and you're not looking after yourself and your mm -hmm. nervous system doesn't work properly, basically, you know. And now you feel like you've flushed all of that. Do you not have trepidation then about getting back on planes to fly from Italy to here to do press? To no, because no. that was 96. That was eons ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And, you know, we we did that whole thing. We fell into this rut of never taking any time off. Yeah. You know, it was just constantly the cranberries, the cranberries, the cranberries. And then now, you know, we do this and like we finished our last tour at the 5th of August was the last show and we did nothing until January. You know, we just... How do you... Um, who's the gatekeeper of making sure that you don't go on some crazy schedule again then? Um, well, we, we yeah, look at we all the like, um, yeah. the offers that come in and we just kind of look at them yeah. and we kind of go, yeah or nay, you know. Yeah. But like... You know, we're quite busy now this year with Rose is coming out, but we've just said, you know, we're taking mm. their six weeks off in the summer, just going to go, you know, swimming yeah. and hanging out and having fun because it's just so important not to lose that perspective that life isn't just about your career and being successful. It's about your sanity and it's about enjoying life. I mean, do you live to work or do you work to live? Right. You know, so. do you consider it work? Well, Tur touring I mean, and playing song music? Well, you know, I work to live. I loved life. It's very important to always have fun, to always smell the roses. But there was a point, yeah, when I stopped having fun and it was just, uh, it became a machine. The cranberries became a machine. Yeah. I became a commodity. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was this other person. I was reading stuff, all this rubbish about myself all the time. And it's nasty. It's completely out of control. So it was like, you know what? You are the keeper of your destiny. It's right. all about choices. Step away. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. So, you know, it's just important to keep that balance. And when you feel like you're being consumed and it's too much, well, then just renege, you know, and take it handy. Like I guess that. if this album goes gangbusters again, though, then uh, the, the pressure will be on to, to get jump back into that machine, right? 
Well, they'll have to wait because we've made a promise to ourselves that we're not going to do that again. See, like, we feel now we look back in the last two albums we did especially, there was this, like, record companies and management going, you know, come on, where's the album? So you feel, you know, you're lying in bed at night going, well, I've got to write another album now and, you know, and tour it. And so we were so happy with this album because we've had all this time to write it. And there's every song, you know, we can stand over it and be proud of. So if we're going to do it again down the road, we want to feel the same way about it. And not until that point will there be another album. There's so much I, I want to ask you about this record and, and a, a bunch of the lyrics and uh, uh, and and the apolitical politicism of it in a sense that it's it doesn't feel like as strident as what you were just talking about those mid '90s songs where it felt like you needed to make a statement. Yeah. Um, but maybe what I will ask you is. Um, uh, you recorded this in Toronto, well, just outside of Toronto, and, and Metalworks. Yeah. Um, you can record, the Cranberries can record an album anywhere in the world. Tell me why uh, you did it uh, at a studio that many of us know uh, here in Mississauga. Well, because, well, it's near my home, so that way I could just come down and do vocals and then head back home on the weekends or whatever, you know, pick the kids up out of school and... Um, you were able to lure the other three fourths of the cranberries actually, to, they were delighted to Canada. To get a break. Sure, they're delighted. They've loads <laughs> of kids to themselves. The no, they're yeah. the opposite to me. Raining in my heart, actually, the one I just sang. I remember writing the opening lines of that, and I was flying out of Limerick, and it was about 2003. And at the time, my, my son's 14 now, but he must have been, he was only a little wee baby and a little girl at the time. And I remember I was actually crying, flying out of Shannon, going on tour, whereas the boys were all like, yes, yes, freedom, <laughs> bed, sleep, woo, breakfast, room service. And I'm their men are mean. I'm crying. But it's like, it's different for a mother to a father, right? Yeah. Women actually do get sad about leaving. Yeah, whereas men are like, woohoo, let's go to the bar party. <laughs> Let me ask you both um, before before we have to close off here. Um, uh, what What's the best part? I'll ask you separately. What's the best part of being back with each other as the cranberries? No, let me start with you. Um, I guess uh, for me, uh, uh, my favorite part is the actual creating new songs, I have to say. Like, I love the touring and I love the recording. But it's actually when you get a new idea and send it to Dolores and then she sends back and it's that moment when you open that email to hear what, what's happening here because this didn't exist a few days ago or whatever it was that it took to get to that point. Yeah. And that's always been kind of what I think has kept me going with it anyway is that it's just to take something that doesn't exist and then have this thing that, you know, more than likely will be released everywhere in the world. And Dolores? And also, no, when you get a new guitar, what do you like? Oh, yeah, well, that's He's so happy he loves guitars still. Yeah, um, for me, yeah, I think it's the same thing, you know, as, as Noel, you know, when you hear something coming together in the studio, it's mm. it's always lovely because, you know, you, you don't really know what, what you sound like when you're actually singing because you're busy singing and you're just expressing it. And afterwards, when you come out and you listen, you go, oh, yeah, this whatever, you know, kind of comes together and you're like, oh, right, hmm, digest that. Well, we're really glad you guys are back together. And, and and it's been a real pleasure to have you here. Thanks for making Thank this stop. Us, and uh, best of luck with this new record. I'm 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 excited for it to get out there on Tuesday.